at the thing stage beep beep ding the beep 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 the microphone works thanks um so thank you all for still being here uh, i hope you had a very nice uh, second day of uh, the things conference and uh, i see a big green button i think i have to press that yes perfect so I'm going to tell you, as the last speaker today, of, uh, about the beep bass. And I am a Pim van Gennep, I'm an uh, engineer, I'm an uh, industrial design engineer. And actually, um, I have my own IoT uh, company that designs connected products, a lot with LoRa. And uh, I founded, together with Martin Schoelman, who's in the back of the audience, uh, the Beep Foundation. And actually, uh, we love LoRa because we have a very good use case for it. So, uh, our team consists of uh, some people that we gathered in the last uh, few months. And actually, since we're having now um, an H2020 subsidy for uh, four years, um, we can really make things happen. So, I'm going to tell you what we did already. Um, bees are an important indicator for a healthy environment. And they provide, actually, a free service of pollination for our fresh fruits and vegetables. And actually, uh, this service is a billion dollar service because it's really hard to pollinate when you don't have any insects or bees. And there are even people in China already with a little brush pollinating uh, vegetables. So we know that it's really uh, something to keep and that's why we actually want to help the bees. But the most important threat to honeybees is actually, at first, the beekeeper taking wrong decisions. Then it is monoculture, so fields of one single crop that the bees can only eat one type of food. Then it is pesticides, the use of pesticides, and then it's diseases. Uh, especially for bee colonies, it's uh, varroa mite, that everywhere in Europe uh, there's bee colonies uh, infected with that. So, how can we help? Um, about 80% uh, of beekeepers are doing beekeeping for a hobby. And actually, this is one beekeeper that's a professional, but that also questions uh, himself how to prevent bees from dying and make the good decisions. I'm a beekeeper in Tilburg. I have about 200 beehives, and I bring my bees to the strawberries, to the glass houses. When they come back, I wanted to know how they can recover, where they can find food. So, where they can find food. How do we know where bees can find food? We can actually weigh the hive, because uh, when bees go to the field and they come back, they collect a lot of pollen and nectar. And nectar is like water, it's heavy. So you can weigh, actually, a day in summer creates an increase of three kilograms of the hive. So actually, you can see if they can eat and if the surroundings are right for the bees. So, in 2017, we started together the Beep Foundation. And the Beep Foundation is all about helping beekeepers keeping bees alive. Um, we created first an application, a, a, a mobile phone application for beekeepers to actually track their inspections of the hives. Very important to not make mistakes, actually know what you did last time. The app actually has about 3,000 users now, um, and it's translated in seven languages and three more to come, thanks to the H2020 project and uh, thanks to the effort of our team. And actually, it can be used for free. And we tend to keep that always the case. So if you know any beekeeper that would like to track his or her inspections, bee inspections, please, beep.nl is uh, the free app. You can put it on your phone. Next to the app, we actually started building a measurement system. Because if you have a lot of hives, then it would be very nice to actually remotely see if the bees are doing well. So. Um, for this uh, Be Good project, this H2020 project, we also deliver all the measurement systems. And actually, we started off in 2017 by this first design, 
that was actually a prototype based on four bathroom scale sensors with a soda catonomo, uh, a low power Arduino, uh, actually sending its data by GSM and taking a lot of wires into a lunchbox. Um, actually, what was really bad was that the battery only lasted for some days and the weight deviation was really high because of the sensors being really prone to temperature changes. So, but the first use case was actually already being there. Martin, uh, which was very proud of uh, the app that we made and the connection with the measurement system, showed the app to his father and then saw, whoa, what's happening? There's about two and a half kilograms gone from my hive. I, as a developer, would think the sensor is broken, but he, as a believer, thought, okay, let's call the nearest beekeeper to my uh, bee, uh, bee apiary and actually ask if he can look. And there it was, in the tree, <laughs> all the bees hanging. So he put the bees in a bucket on top of the hive later in the evening, and he actually saw that it was the same amount of weight. So there was the very good use case born, and we were really enthusiastic about the system. So the second version of it was already a bit better. Uh, it was uh, a wooden milled frame with four load cells because of the stability, and um, a temperature and humidity sensor inside, um, a Dragino LoRa, like a little Arduino with a LoRa chip, and it, uh, it had some uh, steel parts. But the problem with this was that actually uh, users needed uh, the Arduino EDA and FTDI cable to, to program it actually with the LoRa keys. Uh, the batteries lasted already for six months, and the last part is actually uh, the cross is uh, that the weight uh, variation was uh, already down to 200 grams, but still not yet good enough. This is actually a picture of the production uh, that we did uh, for uh, 25 of these uh, systems that are currently being used in Tilburg. And uh, this is a, a milling machine that actually milled the whole day over one plate. And we had to change the mill like three times in different uh, sizes, but still we had to mill one day for 10 systems. And actually uh, the assembly later on was three hours per base, so also not a really good business case. Then, this year, or last year actually, uh, we came up with the new model actually, uh, and what we thought was, okay, we need to solve this problem of end users not being able to program a LoRa one device, because that's a really hard problem. If you're giving it to beekeepers that are 65 plus in age, then they have a mobile phone, but they don't have the means to actually uh, program the Arduino EDA. And so um, we uh, actually shifted from Arduino to the Nordic chip because it also has Bluetooth inside. And the nice thing of the Nordic chip is that it's uh, a, a chip that you can do a lot with and a lot on and actually also use the Bluetooth. And we made uh, a LoRa uh, chip also next to it. Uh, we asked Idetron, a company from the Netherlands that is really good at making low-power LoRa products, to develop uh, the PCB and also the firmware. And we put it in a stainless steel frame so that it can last and it can actually uh, yeah, be like a sturdy product. And actually now users can program it with their mobile phone. So they can actually uh, wake it up by a little magnet, beep beep and uh, they see it on their mobile phone and they press auto-configure. That's all. And then it's connected to the Things Network via our backend. It asks all the keys, puts it via Bluetooth into the device, it sends some, a LoRa message, checks it, and then comes back with it's configured. And you can even configure all the uh, sensor, uh, temperature sensor, microphone, and the weight um, uh, um, calibration by the app and by Bluetooth. So actually, the, um, it can be configured by Bluetooth, by your mobile phone. It has a battery life of up to 10 years if you send one message per day. And it actually, the weight deviation is really uh, something that, that we didn't expect. It is down to 10 grams. We actually, we literally put 
a few papers on it, and we could measure that. And this is a sensor that goes from zero to 125 kilograms. So that's quite awesome. So what actually is this beep bass? And what does it do? The beep bass is a combination of a scale, a temperature sensor, and a microphone. You place the scale under your hive and position the other sensors inside the hive. Through the beep app, you can get a good picture of your bee colony. So this is actually the circuit board that we created together with Idetron. And this is inside the beep base, and it has a lot of features. So uh, I will quickly run you to the most important features. It actually has a very good power regulator that you can switch off because you need that for really stable measurements for the sensors. It has obviously a LoRa chip. You can put uh, the US one or the EU one on it. It has uh, uh, sensor brackets, and it has the protocol already for uh, humidity and temperature sensor, and for up to 100 um, uh, temperature sensors parallel. And by power restrictions, it's now only uh, actually uh, we, we recommend to only uh, install five, but that's perfectly possible. And you can also, with the app, say, okay, this is this, this is this, and this is this sensor uh, in the configuration. It's very important, we expect a lot of the microphone. There's a microphone to it, but it needs a really good AD converter to actually process the signal and to make a Fourier analysis of the complete spectrum. And with bees, we are really interested in the spectrum from 500 hertz to about 2 kilohertz. And we made this device so that it can bin it in really small bins. So also by Bluetooth, you can set which bins you would like to uh, measure. And it can measure uh, uh, the, this audio by just a mic microphone input, and you can put in every microphone that you would like. Uh, it actually has a read switch to power on the Bluetooth, and it stays on for three minutes, and then it goes down. It has um, a, a tilt switch. If I put it like this, then it will beep. Ah, you just heard. And it, it beeps for a long time, so you know now it's off. And actually, you can put them in your shed like this for five years, and then when you put it down, it actually gives you four little beeps so that it knows that it's on again. And now it will do the OTA connection uh, via LoRa again. So it's also a way to reset it easily. And this is, these are things that are really convenient, actually. If you make a product for beekeepers, then it has to be simple, and it has to be functioning like this. Um, uh, we, we also put uh, a weight amp uh, on it uh, to actually uh, amplify the weight. The load sen sensor is in the, in the middle. <coughs> and um, it also has a memory that it can store all the data inside. And with Bluetooth, you can also read it out. So if you don't have any LoRa connection and you don't have a satellite gateway, then you can actually measure inside the memory and just go there by Bluetooth and read out all the data, and you have it also in your app. So um, last November, we did a Kickstarter, and we were really surprised because actually it was 300% uh, funded. So we were happy, and both we were actually anxious because now we have to make a lot of them. Um, we already had some that we had to make for the H2020 project, but now uh, currently we have uh, a production of 450 systems, and next year we will produce again a batch. So would you like a PCB or a box or the, the full system? Please um, uh, bookmark beep.nl, and we will announce when we will do the production round again. So we are uh, really happy to actually, uh, to your input. So if you would like to help, or if you would like to develop, or if you would like to make your own system and uh, change it in some way, please go to our GitHub, github.com slash beepnl. And it has all the software of the app open source. It has all the hardware designs open source for all the models. And it has the PCB design and the firmware there. So you can do with it what you want. So don't hesitate to help some bees and do a pull request.
Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Pim. If I were a bee, I would know where I would go, I would say. <laughs> um, any questions to Pim? Yes, um, here's my microphone. Hi, I have a quick question about the microphone. Uh, what is it for? Why is the Fourier analysis interesting? Um, the Fourier analysis is actually interesting because we want to listen to the bees. Because actually, if you ask a beekeeper, are your bees healthy? He bangs into the hive and then they go And when they go back fast, then he knows it's a healthy colony. When they keep on buzzing very hard, then the color, there's something wrong. And actually, if a beekeeper can hear that, a microphone can also hear that. And if you measure at night, for example, and you listen to the hive, then you can distinguish the frequencies that are defined by the, the wing stiffness, actually, of the, of the bees. So young bees are, uh, for example, a few days old, have very, um, uh, like, non-stiff... Uh, fragile. Yeah, fragile wings. And um, these wings, they produce a lower frequency because they buzz like lower. And if you measure at 4 o'clock at night, then mostly they are done with all the processing of the, uh, of the honey. And they are actually the most uh, repeatable. So you can measure them perfectly at that time. And if you then sample the frequency a few times, then you actually see, is it changing by day by day? And is it, is, are there more low frequencies? Then probably you should be warned because they are going to swarm because they did actually put the queen on a diet. And then the young bees that normally feed the queen have nothing to do and they start to ventilate. So actually it's very interesting and there's a lot of research being done now, but we are not there yet. So if anybody's interested or has some experience in audio or AI with audio, please... Uh, also come to us. Yes, so li listen clear to the bees and don't put the queen on a diet. Exactly. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. You don't talk about the price of the product, entire product. True. Also from, from the scale sensor. Do you want to know the price? Yes. Okay, um, in the Kickstarter we asked 300 euros for the whole system. Uh, so you get the steel, you get the, the node, and you get all the sensors, and actually two temperature sensors, be, because we want overfunded, and a microphone. And uh, we try actually to make it affordable for beekeepers. And the range of uh, cost of a hive is actually more or less the measure that we would like to be in. And this is about 250 to 400 euros. And uh, yeah, the systems that are commercially available right now, they start at about 500 until 1500 euros with the same functionality. So it's already a lot uh, uh, more affordable and uh, it can even go down if we uh, optimize uh, production in a little bit more. Okay, one last question. Yeah, all the way down. Yes. Um, beekeepers, as you said, are, well, mostly uh, well, uh, retired people. Uh, so what's your plan to get this uh, product to those people? They're mostly offline, you know, not really uh, digitally mm -hmm. uh, busy, you know. So do, are you going to, to them? Are you, are you uh, signing up the, the, yeah, the Afdeling and the, the, the beekeeper uh, guilds or... Uh, so your question is, um, so what is the tar target group? How do you reach the beekeepers? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, actually, we are doing a lot of talks in beekeeper associations. So you have a lo lot of groups with beekeepers organized in every country. And we do a lot of talks there. So we just go there and we present the app and uh, we present this. And um, beekeepers also come to us. And actually, because a, a lot more beekeepers tend to subscribe to the app we have this platform to actually make things known to beekeepers. Um, and um, yeah, we, we also discuss with beekeepers what is the best uh, solution for them. And in this uh, European project, we also will do some feedback 
sessions with big groups of beekeepers. And in the third year of the project, as a beekeeper, you can also apply for a free system, if you, wouldn't, if you want. Okay. Great. I wish you good luck with the bees, uh, Pim. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe see you next year here around. Thank you so okay. much, Pim. Thanks.